My name is Dr. Frank Njenga and I'm a consultant psychiatrist uh, here to, to talk about uh, mental health in the COVID-19 era in collaboration with Britain. The first uh, reaction to normal human beings is a sense of fear, worry, anxiety, stress. And that I would like to emphasize is a normal response that is elicited by normal people in a new, novel, dangerous and worrying um, environment. The consequence of excessive worry and, uh, and anxiety um, is manifold and uh, some people uh, are unable to sleep, for example, uh, others lose appetite, others become irritable and angry more easily than usual. Normal people faced by a pandemic behave in a way that is unusual but acceptable. The way to take uh, care of particular uh, mental health is first of all to remain informed. Once you have informed yourself from a reliable source, then there are a number of things that you can then be able to do uh, yourself. For example, the, the effect of the pandemic is that it, is, it destroys routine. It makes us stay at home. It makes us spend too much time um, doing very little, watching videos and, um, and things like that. So the first thing that you need to do after you have informed yourself is to ensure that you have a routine. Go to bed at an appointed time, wake up at an appointed time, and make sure that your life uh, has a measure of regularity and routine. The second thing is to keep yourself clean. There are a lot of people during this pandemic stay in bed from uh, night until morning and then the whole day, and perhaps because of the anxiety and worry, they even forget about looking after their own uh, personal uh, hygiene. The next thing is that because you're at home on the couch, uh, you eat badly. Uh, and you're snacking uh, all day. It's very important that families uh, take appropriate measures to make sure that they eat uh, healthy food, including fruits and vegetables and so on. All this sounds common sense, but I think it is important because it contributes uh, to your mental health as well. I cannot overemphasize the importance and significance of exercise. A lot of people think that exercise is for the body. Yes, it is for the body, but it's also critical um, to the mind. Find time to do something interesting. Find something that you enjoy doing. If you enjoy reading, read. If you enjoy praying, pray. If you enjoy talking to your relatives, call them and talk to them. But for goodness sake, this is not the end of the world and you must find something that is enjoyable to yourself to do, even as we ride this crest. Britam, with you every step of the way. Save and invest in the Britam Money Market Fund and realize your dreams. Are you saving up for a car, school fees, a wedding, or even a holiday? Whatever your saving. Good morning, unit holders 
guests and colleagues. On behalf of the unit holders of Britam Unit Trust Funds, it's my pleasure to welcome you to the 14th Annual General Meeting of the Unit Trust Funds. To start us off, I'll invite uh, Ms. Becke Diba to lead us in a word of prayer. Good morning, unit holders. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for giving us a brand new day. We thank you for being able to see this day and in order to have this meeting. As we start it off, be with us. Give us your guidance, your grace, and your leadership. We pray for our unit holders. We pray for their safety. And we thank them for being with us, uh, joining us through this session, and also investing with us. Uh, when we see the end of this meeting, we shall be sure to thank you. We pray that shortly, believing and trusting in your holy name. Amen. 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 My name is Gladys Karuri. I'm the Principal Executi Executive Director of Britam PLC. I will chair this meeting. I hope you're all keeping safe and keeping well in these unusual times here in Kenya and indeed uh, globally. Since the outbreak of COVID-19 in Kenya, the government has made several directives and progressively restricted movements and gatherings. The impact of these restrictions uh, in the context of this meeting is that we are not able to physically uh, meet uh, with the unit holders according to the trust deed and rules of Britam unit trust funds. As such, to ensure compliance with the law, this 14th annual general meeting uh, of the unit trust funds will proceed electronically. We have received a no objection from the Capital Markets Authority to proceed this way. Let me now introduce the management team as well as the team of advisors present here with me. I'll start on my left. On my left is Mrs. Nancy Kiruki, the company secretary. On my right is uh, Mr. Kenneth Kaneo. Mr. Kenneth Kaneo is the Chief Executive Officer. Next to Mr. Kenneth Kaneo is Mr. James Mose. Mr. James Mose is the Chief Investment Officer. Next to Mr. Mose is Ms. Janet Wawero. Ms. Janet Wawero is the Chief Finance Officer. And next to uh, Ms. Ms. Wawero is Mr. Gideon Choka. Mr. Gideon Choka represents our custodian, Standard Chartered Bank. Coming back to the left, Mr. Timothy Demwa. Mr. Timothy Demwa represents our trustees, KCB Bank. Next to Timothy is Mr. Isaiah Gakonyo. Isaiah Gakonyo is our auditor uh, and represents PwC. I would also like to acknowledge the presence of executive management who have joined us in this meeting uh, virtually. And I want to thank them for their dedicated service and commitment to the funds as well, to, as well as to you unit holders. I take this opportunity uh, to acknowledge the support that we've received from uh, Image Registrar towards uh, the success of this electronic meeting. Thank you, Image Registrars. I shall now call upon the Secretary to ascertain whether we have a quorum for this meeting. Ms. Keruki. Thank you, Madam Chair. I confirm that the required quorum for each of the funds has been met. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Mrs. Keruki. A quorum having been, uh, a quorum being present, I declare this meeting to be properly convened and duly constituted. I call, up, call upon the secretary again to read the notice convening this meeting. Thank you, Madam Chair. The notice 
of the annual general meeting was published on our website and also shared with the unit holders via email and SMS. May I request the unit holders to take the notice of the meeting as read. The highlights of the notice are as follows. Number one, to read the notice convening the meeting. Number two, to, to receive, consider, and de if deemed fit, adopt the annual report and financial statements for the year ended 31st December 2019, together with the auditor's report thereon. And number three, to transact any other business of the Britam Unit Trust Funds of which due notice has been received. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Madam Secretary. At this point in time, I'd like to invite our Chief Executive Officer, Mr. Kenneth Kaneo, uh, to present his report for the year ended 31st December 2019. Welcome, Kenneth. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair. And uh, good morning once again uh, to all you unit holders. And thank you very much for finding the time to participate once again in our annual general meeting. This is our 14th annual general meeting for the Britam Unit Trust Funds, but indeed it is the first ever uh, annual general meeting that we are holding virtually. And I think we're grateful to the support of our service providers and particularly the Capital Markets Authority uh, for allowing us in this manner to be able to communicate with you and also fulfill our obligations from a regulatory uh, perspective. Allow me first to introduce members of the executive management team who are both here and also those who are participating uh, virtually. Uh, you certainly have had me being introduced. Once again, for your benefit, my name is Kenneth Kaneo, and I'm the Chief uh, Executive Officer of Britam uh, Asset Managers. Uh, I'm also joined by James Mose. James Mose is our Chief um, Investment Officer, and I think you can see his picture there on the screen. I'm also joined in this meeting by Janet Wawero, our Chief uh, Finance Officer, or CFO. Uh, we have Patricia Kemama. Patricia is our Chief Operating Officer, who joined the company recently. We have Jerry Dirango. Jerry Dirango is our Head of Business Development within the Asset Management Business. Uh, Miriam Boyd Kahiro is our Head uh, of Legal within the Asset Management uh, Business. We have uh, Sami Kirato. Sami is the Head of Risk and Compliance for the Asset Management Business. Uh, Ivan Bora is our Head of Human Resources. And lastly, we have uh, Susan Saina, our Head of Marketing. Uh, without whose support this morning, this meeting would not be, uh, would not be possible. Uh, indeed, unit holders, as you can see, we are living in very uncertain and unusual times. Uh, we're going through a global uh, pandemic. But as I mentioned earlier, we are very grateful uh, for the support that we have received from all our stakeholders, which has allowed us to be able to conduct this meeting uh, virtually. As Britam, we have been able to reorganize ourselves to then ensure that we're able to offer service to you uh, as our customers, clients, and unit holders during this particular time. And as an example, uh, we have now been able to empower most of our staff, if not all, empower them with the ability to be able to work from home. All of them have the necessary infrastructure from the point of view of equipment like laptops, uh, laptops that are enabled to VPNs to allow them to connect back to the office, all of this infrastructure is IT enabled, and that has ensured that from the point of view of business services, all their transactions, all their processing, all their investments, all of that has continued uninterrupted uh, for your benefit as a unit holder. We have also adopted the Ministry of Health guidelines with respect to public safety uh, requirements. So as an example, all our offices are fitted with automatic uh, sanitizers, which provide the, san the necessary sanitizing gel. Uh, all our staff and customers uh, must wear masks whenever they are on premises. And we take uh, body temperature measurements for any member of staff or any customer who then engages with us uh, here at Britain. We have also made investments over the last one or two years that have allowed us to be able to serve our customers virtually. And as an example, we now have uh, the My Britam 
uh, mobile application and the My Britain portal, which allow customers to be able to, to self-serve. Uh, the Britain app allows you through the mobile phone to be able to enroll in the fund. Uh, it allows you to be able to transact within the fund, either to top up or to withdraw. Allows you to be able to engage in balance inquiries. And I think uh, unit holders, you will agree with me that that is a major innovation, particularly at this time of the pandemic when truly we want to limit physical contact, but at the same time we want business to continue uninterrupted and, um, and unabated. So I want to confirm our commitment as Britam to your financial well-being as a unit holder, and we do commit to continue uh, to be your partner of choice, both now and moving uh, into the future. We will certainly endeavor to keep you updated with respect to changes that we see in the financial markets. And I think, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if we proceed that way, then we will be successful and we will see the back end of this uh, pandemic and move on towards, towards the future. I now want to proceed to give you a brief presentation uh, on the company. And I'll do that, ladies and gentlemen, within the next five uh, to ten uh, minutes. If I now move to the presentation, and you can probably see it there on the screen, um, you can see that um, Britam is in fact a financial services business. Um, the holding company is a holding company that owns and has direct oversight over three different lines of businesses and over 13 business units spread out in seven different African countries. The holding company is a listed uh, entity. It was listed on the Nairobi Securities Exchange in the year 2010. And as a shareholder or an investor into that listed company, it then gives you exposure to those three business lines that you can see there on the screen. Uh, we have uh, a presence uh, in the life assurance uh, market. We are the largest life assurance business in Eastern Central Africa by way of gross return premium. And this is the business that will offer you the normal life assurance services, uh, either endowment plans, uh, savings plans, annuity plans, education plans, and so on and so forth. We also have a general insurance uh, company that is present both in Kenya and in another six um, African countries. And really its work, as the name suggests, is short-term insurance. So medical insurance, car insurance, property insurance, fire insurance, you can get all those services through uh, the general insurance business. The asset management company is the second or the third business that uh, Britam is present in and is really the reason why you're here today because all of you are investors into the unit trust funds that are run by the asset management business. Uh, and this is a business that is resident not just in Kenya, but also has a company that was set up in Uganda approximately three years ago. We have a property business that we run within uh, Britam. Uh, we have two entities in Kenya and Uganda that engage in property investments, uh, particularly from the point of view of managing third-party clients. So we provide advice to third-party clients. We are engaged in properties management and facility management. And as well, uh, we are shortly going to embark on a suite uh, of property funds, uh, once again for your benefit uh, as unit holders. We also have portfolio investments, and these are balance sheet investments into two listed banks, as you may already know, uh, unit holders. We own approximately 48% uh, of housing finance group, and we own 7.9% uh, in equity group holdings. And these uh, are investments which are strategic in nature, and they're very useful from the point of view of either distribution of insurance products through banking channels, what they call bank assurance. And it also allows us to be able to access uh, more banking customers, more financial services customers, and engage with them uh, in a much more better way. As I mentioned, ladies and gentlemen, we are present in seven African countries. And you can see truly we are talking of greater, greater uh, Eastern Africa. Uh, in Kenya, uh, Tanzania, Uganda, Malawi, Rwanda, uh, Mozambique, and South Sudan. And if you add the footprint there, at, uh, unit holders, you'll probably see that we have more than 50 different offices and branches spread out across those seven countries. You are really here because of the asset management company. We were set up in the year 2004, so we are approximately 16 years old. And we are now managing more than 208 billion shillings in terms of assets uh, under management. 
with close to 400 billion uh, Uganda shillings worth of assets under management for our Ugandan entity. In terms of milestones for the business, having been set up in Kenya in 2004, we then set up in Uganda in the year 2017 in July, approximately three years ago. And I do remember the launch of that company as clear as day uh, in Kampala. Uh, in 2018, we for the first time in this market invested into uh, an energy and infrastructure uh, fund. It was a wonderful investment of about 1.4 billion shillings. And we made this investment in the pursuit of diversification and as far as returns for our investors was con were concerned, and also diversification and as far as risk uh, was concerned for our investors. We launched unit trust funds uh, in Uganda last year, in the year 2019. It is a milestone for that business because that is a product that allows them to engage directly with the, with the retail market. And we are very excited about the, pro the progress that is being made by our Ugandan subsidiary in that market. And this year we're particularly proud of having launched um, the MyBritam app and the MyBritam portal. As I mentioned earlier, the MyBritam app is a mobile application that works on your mobile phone. You can download it from either the Google Play Store or the Apple uh, iStore. And the portal is internet enabled and it can work from any desktop uh, or laptop uh, or personal computer. And there you can be able to transact, view your statements, uh, you can top up, you can withdraw, you can enroll. So truly, you do not have to pick up the phone to talk to anybody anymore to ask about balance inquiries. You do not have to pick up the phone and ask about how do I withdraw. Neither do you have to stop what you're doing and come and visit us uh, in our branches. You can be able to do all of that from the comfort of your, of your device. This is a graphical representation of the growth in our assets and the management over the last five years. As you can see, unit holders, our assets and our management have more or less doubled from 105 billion in June 2016 to 208 billion as of June 2020. And this would not have been possible were it not for the support and the trust and the confidence that you have uh, bestowed on us as unit holders. And we are grateful for that support. We're also grateful for the team that we have at Britain Asset Managers who have done a lot of work from the point of ensuring, number one, the safety of your, of your investments, and secondly, the growth from the point of view of the investment returns. So it is a shared uh, milestone for everybody. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for that support. These are the strengths that we have um, as a business. Uh, we feel we do have a strong brand heritage, having traded in the Kenyan market for close to 55 years. We're an indigenous Kenyan company, which is something we're proud of. And from the point of view of the strength of the brand and the depth of the brand equity, it is something that we count, certainly as a strength within uh, this market. We have a customized investment approach, meaning that we want to get to know you as our customer, and we want to be able to have a product that matches your needs, matches your lifestyle, and matches your risk, uh, risk tolerance or risk preference. We have good world-class capabilities, both from the point of view of the depth of the team and secondly, from the point of view of best-in-class systems. So you're in a good home, uh, unit holders. And lastly, we have diversity from the point of view of product and diversity by the, from the point of view of client segment, be you rate, be retail or institutional in terms of nature. We're a multi-asset asset manager, as you well know, investing in different asset classes, all the way from the conservative fixed income, which is the treasury bills, the treasury bonds, deposits, and so on and so forth. We're a major investor into the listed equities market, not just in Kenya, but across uh, Africa. We are investors into private equity funds because we do know that there are a lot of opportunities in private equity relative to what we see on the listed uh, equity side. And we are as well major investors in the property market, both on behalf of Britam and also on behalf of our third-party customers, be they individuals, uh, pension funds, insurance companies, and so on and so forth. So we do feel that we have a good team that is able to cut right across. These are our retail and corporate products, uh, ladies and gentlemen. You are all here today in support of those unit trust funds that you can see there. That is what we would call our, our leading retail product. And you are, as a unit holder, you are either in what we would call the conservative money market fund. You are either in a bond plus fund, which invests primarily in government bonds. You are either in an equity fund, which gives you exposure to the stock market. 
or you're in the balance fund, which is really a combination of both equities and bonds. It's what you call a middle of the road solution. Those funds have been growing well and uh, unit holders, we are very grateful for the support that you have given us from the point of view of the growth that we have experienced in as far as those funds are concerned. Uh, we also have a wealth management fund which has done extremely well uh, over the last six or seven years. Uh, with, these, with this particular fund, it means that one locks up their money for between three, six and 12 months. And in return for locking up your money, you then are able to access a higher return, primarily from bank deposits, government securities, T-bills, and so on and so forth. We do invest money on behalf of Kenyans who are in the diaspora. We have a lot of Kenyans sending money back home. I think by last count, we were talking of close to more than 100 billion shillings coming in every month. And we do have some of that money coming into Britain products. We have been able to establish the relevant uh, payment gateways and payment uh, channels. And we are trusted out there by Kenyans in the diaspora who incidentally invest a lot of their funds back into these unit trust funds that you already invested in. So we do want to thank those in the diaspora who have chosen to invest with us. We know many of them may be watching today from wherever it is that they are. So wherever you are, we do wish you well and please re accept our greetings and please continue to save and invest, which is a critical uh, component of activity at this, uh, at this time. We have institutional funds. We do manage what we call uh, segregated bandits. We do this principally for retirement benefit schemes, uh, be they defined benefit, defined contribution, pension funds or provident funds from all manner of sponsors, be they NGOs, uh, state-owned uh, enterprises and so on and so forth. So we are major investor uh, and fund manager on behalf of that sort of business. And we also uh, invest uh, into the retirement sector for small and medium-sized enterprises. We typically present them uh, this umbrella fund solution because this allows them to be able to benefit from economies of scale, particularly in as far as cost is concerned, but allows them to be able to access the same professional service as they would for any other major institutional uh, investor. I mentioned earlier on the property side, we are an investor into property. And I think you can see there in that picture uh, the award-winning and iconic Britam Tower, which is reputed to be for now the third tallest uh, building in sub-Saharan Africa. We do a lot of property, we offer a lot of property advisory services for our institutional customers. We take them through a process of either, if you look at income producing properties, maximizing income and optimizing cost. We advise customers from the point of view of developments and how they can undertake developments. We are setting up, as I mentioned earlier, property management and facilities management business. And from the point of view of research, we do issue a lot of research, both to our customers and to members of the public. And you may have seen our research pieces over the past year speaking to developments uh, and trends and the line of travel that we then see coming through uh, from, the property, uh, from the property market. In terms of innovation, we do feel that we are strong on innovation. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, we started this off in 2018 with a USSD code. Uh, the USSD code is the one that you can see on your screen there. It is star 778 hash. All you need to do is pick up your mobile phone and dial star 778 hash. And that will allow you straight away, either from your feature phone or your smartphone, to be able to access uh, your unit trust funds. And from there, you can check your balance, you can withdraw your funds, you can change your PIN, you can engage in quite a number of activities that would allow you to self-serve and not have to visit uh, our offices physically. We enhanced that USSD code from 2018 uh, into what we are calling the MyBritam app and the MyBritam portal. So this is now a much better um, uh, interface that we have launched this year. And this is an interface that allows you to have greater functionality. So as you can see on the screen there, you can open up uh, an account and, and enroll, enroll and onboard uh, into the fund. Uh, you can be able to talk to us through the chat and call function. You can actually transact, meaning that you can top up, you can withdraw, uh, you can put in funds and so on and so forth. You can be able to view your statement details, your portfolio details and product information. So truly anything that would have caused you in the past to have to pick up the phone and talk to somebody or have to come physically to our offices to engage, you can now be able to do from the comfort of your phone. And I think you'll agree with me uh, unit holders that that is a good step, it is a good innovation, 
It is less phone calls, uh, less physical paper, and allows us truly to be able to engage at the right level with respect to your investments. And for those who may not want to do it on the phone, you can do that from your laptop or your, or your PC through what we call the MyBritam uh, or MyBritam portal. This is how the mobile application looks like. You can see it has a very nice uh, user interface, meaning that a lot of people have spent a lot of effort to make sure that not only does it look good, but it also feels, uh, feels good as well. And from the point of view of the navigation, you can see some of the features that are there uh, on the screen. This is the MyBritam portal. This is what it will look like if you log into your laptop or your desktop computer. And really to be able to do that, you can see the kind of features that are there. Uh, from an asset management uh, perspective. The good thing about this portal and this mobile application is that you can also view uh, your total product portfolio uh, within Britam and you can be able to view the kind of products uh, that you have uh, with the life company, with the general insurance company and also with the asset management company. So it is all in one, it's a central location and allows you to transact right across the board and as far as Britam is concerned. To get started for the portal, which is a, which once again is for the laptop or for the desktop computer, go and click on the link that is on the screen there. That link is customerconnect.britam.com. Go to your laptop and type in customerconnect.britam.com and that will allow you to access the MyBritam portal. Sign up with your national identification card. Accept the terms and conditions. And there you have it, you will be registered into the fund. You will receive a message from Britam with a one-time password and you can use this password or change it for future logins and as far as security is concerned. So very simple, not very complicated. The steps are just one, two, three. And I know in life we like things which are labeled one, two, and three. So we have followed that methodology in as far as the, the mobile uh, app is concerned in the portal. So once again, go to customerconnect.britam.com and get signed up or go to the Google Play Store or the uh, Apple iStore in as far as your phone is concerned uh, to then sign up. So members and unit holders, I want to thank you very much for the support that you have offered to the asset management company. We thank you once again for your participation in this virtual AGM, which is an innovation in itself. We have more than 2,000 unit holders who we know have signed up and are most likely watching us. And we do wish you well as you then conduct and transact your business in the course of today's AGM. So thank you very much, Asante Sana. And Madam Chair, I hand back to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Kenneth Kaniu, for that very insightful presentation. Uh, unit holders are now well informed on uh, the business of Britam uh, and Britam asset managers in particular, and very, very, um, uh, very, very uh, well informed on the innovation that uh, you've brought about this year that enables um, the unit holders uh, to invest, to withdraw, to top up at their convenience, wherever they are, whether at home, in their offices, or wherever else they may be. So thank you, uh, Kenneth, uh, for that presentation. I would like now to invite um, Mr. James Mosse, uh, to present the fund manager's report for the year ended 31st December 2019. Mr. Mosse. Thank you, Madam Chair, and good morning, uh, unit holders. I'll be taking us through uh, the uh, fund manager's report, uh, just looking at the performance uh, of the four unit trusts, how exactly they performed uh, last year, that's 2019. Um, but before I get to uh, the actual uh, performance of why exactly the unit trust performed, I'll lay, I'll lay the ground by looking at how the macroeconomic uh, picture looked like in, 20, in 2019. So I'll start with the economic uh, outlook um, whereby we look at um, how the Kenyan GDP uh, performed uh, in 2019 as compared to uh, the performance in 2018. And as you can see um, on the screen, uh, the Kenyan GDP grew by 5.4% uh, in the year 2019, which was a slowdown as compared to the performance it did register 
in 2018. Um, and the key reason as to why there was a slowdown, um, it's because of um, rainfall. Um, we did have uh, delayed um, short trains. Our economy heavily depends on the performance of agriculture, um, which accounts about 25% of our GDP. And the agriculture depends on rainfall. So when the rains delay or they're inadequate, then you'd expect um, our GDP um, to be adversely impacted. Um, as we look forward to 2020, um, the picture we have, um, and rightly so, is that the economy is uh, really headed for a slowdown, uh, whereby we expect the economy to grow by a rate of about 1.3%, um, which is slightly better as compared to the forecasts that have come through from the World Bank, the IMF, but slightly pessimistic as compared to the guidance that we've gotten from the government of Kenya and the central bank. The key reason as to why we are looking at um, a major slowdown, whereby we only expect the economy to grow by a rate of 1.3%, it's heavily informed by the effect of COVID-19, um, how COVID-19 has impacted our economy. Um, why not because of the strong performance that we are seeing coming through from agriculture, uh, we'll have looked um, at a contraction uh, in the year 2020. But because uh, we've seen the quarter one numbers come through, whereby the economy grew by 4.9% in quarter one this year, heavily informed by the performance of agriculture, we expect agriculture to carry through the performance of the Kenyan economy in the year 2020 and result to a 1.3% GDP growth. Um, as we look at um, exchange rates, so we're just trying to compare how the Kenyan shilling performed against major currencies in the year 2019 as compared to 2018. And the key reason as to why uh, we look at currency, it's because of um, the activity in Nairobi Securities Exchange, uh, whereby um, about 50 to 60 percent of the activity in Nairobi Securities Exchange is controlled by the foreign investors. And for the foreign investors, um, they don't look at returns in cash shillings, they look at returns in dollar terms. So whenever the Kenyan shilling happens to be under pressure, it, it depreciates especially to the dollar, you'll see the foreign investors uh, uh, liquidating their positions and um, that results to normally a negative performance. But if you look at 2018, the Kenyan shilling uh, was largely stable as compared to the dollar and that fed through in 2019 as well. The Kenyan shilling was also largely stable um, as compared to the dollar. By looking forward to 2020, um, because of the effect of COVID-19, uh, we've seen the shilling already depreciating by close to 6.5%. Um, the outlook we've got as we go to next year, um, the year 2021, would expect the shilling to start uh, gaining. Um, and this will not just be specific to the Kenyan shilling, but uh, will be true to all the major emerging markets, um, currencies and even frontier markets, um, currencies, because what has happened is because of the uncertainty that has been brought about by uh, COVID-19, we've seen investors prefer dollar-denominated assets. So the increased demand for dollar assets has resulted to uh, currencies across the globe depreciating against the dollar. But we'd expect this to unwind as we go to next year, as we expect that um, maybe in quarter one or quarter two next year, will have gotten a vaccine, and now that will inform risk-on stances from investors, and that then will see the dollar depreciating across currencies, and the shilling uh, should be able to benefit. For inflation, um, inflation was largely anchored uh, in 2019. Um, it, remains, it remained uh, within the central bank target. The central bank uh, targets to keep um, our inflation uh, between 2.5% uh, percent to 7.5 percent. As you can see, um, the red uh, curve, um, inflation was largely around 5 percent. Um, and as we look to um, 2020, uh, uh, just looking through this year thus far, inflation has really remained within um, the central bank target of 2.5 to 7.5 percent. And this year it's because of the good rainfall that we've uh, received. Um, our inflation um, is explained by about 35, uh, food prices explain about 35% of our inflation. 
and the food prices um, have a positive correlation with rainfall. So as the rains have been good, have been decent, we'd expect inflation to be um, largely anchored around those levels. And as we go to next year, uh, actually towards the end of this year, we don't see a risk of inflation aging above 7.5%. Um, on interest rates, um, last year, towards the end of uh, 2019, um, we saw the short-term interest rates inching up, and that fed through to the long-term interest rates as well. And the key reason as to why interest rates uh, inched up, it's because of the reversal of the interest rate caps. Um, and now that encouraged um, commercial banks to start lending, reduce liquidity that was chasing uh, treasury bills and treasury bonds. Um, but as uh, we now cross to the year 2020, the current year, uh, we've seen a reversal of, of that, whereby interest rates have been declining, uh, both short-term interest rates and long-term interest rates. And the key reason has been because of all the uncertainty uh, in the market. Uh, banks are not willing to advance new loans, so they're sitting on so much cash, and the options they've got are very limited. So um, they're forced to invest now in treasury bills, treasury bonds, and that has seen interest rates are really declining uh, this year. On the equity markets, um, last year was a very good year, uh, whereby the equity market went up by 18.5%, um, and it was a reaction to the um, reversal of uh, the interest rate caps. Um, we have... Uh, the banking sector controlling um, close to 30% of our market. So in reaction of that uh, decision to repeal um, the interest rate caps, we saw um, the banking stocks prices really rallying last year, and that in largely informs the 18.5% um, positive performance that we experienced in 2019. Looking to 2020, um, because of the effects of COVID-19, not really specific to our market, but globally, we've seen equity markets really um, uh, hitting a bear run, and that explains the year-to-date performance, whereby our market um, by, by June, um, July, it had uh, declined by close to 20.5%. Uh, but really, um, from where we sit, we're seeing a very good opportunity for a long-term investor, because most of the um, stocks, um, especially the stocks with strong fundamentals, um, they're really going concerns. You don't expect them to collapse. Um, and we think the market has overreacted. So for a long-term investor, it's really an opportunity to buy the stocks currently at their current prices while they're cheap. I now go to the performance um, of the four unit trusts, um, starting with the money market fund. So we look at how exactly um, the fund uh, was invested at the end of um, the year as compared to the same period end of uh, 2018. Uh, the money market fund um, largely invests in short-term um, fixed income opportunities. Um, this the tables, deposits, um, commercial uh, papers, and um, short-term bonds. Um, you can see the biggest movement we had uh, for a money market fund is around the corporate securities exposure, which did increase um, from 19% in 2018 um, to 52% uh, in 2019. And really, the, um, we saw an opportunity whereby they were uh, the corporate bonds trading um, in the um, securities market um, at good yields. We took advantage and bought them, and that um, um, li lifted, lifted the yield. This is the performance uh, of the money market fund. Uh, the performance... Um, uh, came in uh, in 2019 at 8.9%. Uh, um, if we look at uh, the performance for the last six years, um, the annualized rate, um, the fund has returned every year for the last um, six years, uh, comes in at 9.9%. Um, currently, um, the fund is yielding 9.2%. Uh, Despite the fact that we've seen interest rates um, traveling lower um, across the yield curve, but we've been innovative, and creative enough um, to look at opportunities available, especially in bond trading. And that's a, this is the reason as to why the rate um, has remained competitive, currently at 9.2%. Uh, next, we'll go to the Bond Plus. Um, this is a fund that invests in 
both short-term fixed income opportunities and long-term um, fixed income opportunities, largely um, investing um, in government, uh, government bonds. Um, so the key movement, if you look at the asset allocation, uh, comparing 2019 to 2018, is around treasury securities, uh, whereby in 2018, um, we had an exposure of 58% in treasury um, securities. This did increase um, to 64% in 2019. Uh, the performance of this fund last year came in at 6.4%. Um, um, the annualized performance of this fund the last six years um, stands at 10.1%. Um, uh, um, the current yield uh, for the fund uh, is currently at 7 0.1% uh, uh, being impacted by the fact that interest rates are traveling lower. Um, but we're trying as well to see um, how best we can uh, improve the yield so that uh, it can average towards the six year annualized um, uh, performance. Um, the balance fund, uh, the, which invests 50% um, in interest bearing assets and 50% in an interest bearing asset, these are exactly what it looked like. Um, uh, in 2019, this is exactly it was invested. Um, the key movement when you compare um, 2018 to 2019 um, is around the equity space, uh, whereby the equity um, allocation did decrease from 66% in 2018 to 56%, um, taking advantage of the rally in uh, 2019. Uh, we sold off um, some of the stocks um, to crystallize the, um, the gains. Um, as we look at the performance of the fund, um, while the equity performance um, was really good, um, the exposure that the fund has uh, in property did weigh down um, on its performance. But what exactly we're doing currently to just make sure that um, we reverse that on a going forward basis, uh, we um, selling the exposure that the fund has um, in property um, so that now um, that the proceeds from property can be rotated um, to the equity asset class, especially at current prices. So that as we go to next year, in time for a rally, this fund uh, will be positioned to perform pretty well. The last uh, fund, um, um, the equity fund, which largely invests in the equity asset class, um, these are exactly what it looked like um, as compared to um, 2018, same period. Um, we're seeing the biggest movement uh, being around the equity asset class, increasing from 37 to 47%. And indeed, uh, even for this fund, because of the exposure that the fund has um, in a property, that did um, take away performance uh, from the fund in 2019. Similar to the balance fund, we are um, putting all the efforts uh, possible to sell the exposure uh, in property so that the proceeds can be uh, rotated to um, the equity market and that will lift the performance as we go to um, next year. Now, unit holders, um, I'll quickly would like to um, share with you um, investment advice. So for instance, you have money, um, you don't know what exactly uh, you can invest in uh, based on the uncertainty that we've been subjected to because of COVID-19. Before you make any investment decision, the key five questions that you need to make sure that you have answers for. Um, the first one is, um, what's your risk appetite? Is your risk appetite low? Is it medium or is it high? And how exactly you can be able to answer this question is, for instance, um, if we look at how, how the equity market has been dancing, going up and about, um, we've seen, for instance, the performance of uh, uh, the equity bank share, um, where before, um, COVID-19, the first case was reported in Kenya. Um, the, share, the share price um, was close to 45 shillings, uh, but we've seen the share price decline all the way to 35 at some point, decline all the way to 28 shillings about two weeks ago. It was actually trading at 28 shillings. Currently, as we speak today, uh, the share price has uh, rose from levels of 28 um, to now currently trading at 36 shillings. If that sort of volatility is something that um, disturbs you, uh, makes you uncomfortable, you can be able to sleep at night, then clearly your answer is that your risk capital is low and then you should avoid um, volatile asset classes. Um, liquidity needs, which ties with the investment horizon, it's how 
uh, quickly. Um, uh, you need the funds. If you need the funds uh, immediately, then of course you you avoid investing the funds in um, volatile opportunities and you pack the funds um, in, for instance, uh, money market. Expect a return. If you expect a return is um, uh, quite aggressive, uh, upwards of 10%, then it means the um, exposure that you need to invest in so that you can be able to give you those high returns as to be the equity asset class, which has higher volatility but potentially um, higher returns. Uh, investment horizon, are you a short-term investor, are you looking to only invest for one year or you're looking to invest for more than um, two years, um, then if you're looking to invest uh, from two years to five years, then you have appetite for volatile asset classes. But if your investment horizon is below two years, then you should be investing um, in money market um, uh, opportunities. Um, then you need to make sure that you're also partnering with a fund manager who understands the market, who's professional, because um, if uh, you answer all these questions correctly, but you partner with the wrong fund manager, you may not be able to achieve your objectives. Um, this is just a snapshot of the fixed income products that we've got in Kenya, treasury bills, bank deposits, um, cash, um, uh, commercial papers, corporate bonds, um, loans to uh, friends, wealth management account, uh, the one the presenter um, we just presented before me um, talked about, Ken uh, Kanu, the our CEO, um, the treasury bonds. Um, as an individual, you may choose to directly invest commercial papers, directly invest in corporate bonds, but you'll be taking on so much risk because you won't uh, be able to benefit from the diversification, for instance, our money market product present or a wealth management uh, uh, product present. So when it's clear to you that um, the product that you'd want to invest in is a fixed income product, then as opposed to um, making an individual uh, investment, you rather invest in a product that has many of these opportunities, um, that's either money market product or the wealth management product. Based on your constraints then, you can be able to choose between the two products. Um, do you need the money immediately, maybe in a month, two months, then your option um, product will be money market, but if you're willing to invest the money for six months all the way from three months all the way to 12 months, and at least you can invest a million shillings, then the best opportunity you've got is the wealth management product. Then you need to all us. The question is, based on um, our outlook uh, for the next one year, um, going to 2021, what exactly should you do? Um, so if you're a long-term investor and you can be able to take on um, volatility, then the best option you've got is to invest uh, in the equity asset class or a product that gives you exposure to the equity um, asset class and that uh, it's either the balance fund or um, the equity fund because we believe as much as the market is down um, close to 20% um, but as we go to next year um, we expect a very uh, good rally and you should be able to make good returns but if you risk averse um, the time horizon you're looking at is less than a year then the best product for you will be uh, the money market product. As I conclude, uh, this is a snapshot um, of um, all our products and we've tried to rank them uh, based on the potential returns that you should expect and um, the pot potential risk or volatility that uh, the product presents. Uh, so as you can see, the equity fund um, presents the highest opportunity to make um, returns, but again, it's the most volatile money market, um, least uh, volatile, uh, but the returns are um, equally low. Thank you very much, uh, unit holders. Now I'll hand over the presentation um, to the chair. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mose, for that presentation, uh, talking to us about the uh, macroeconomic economic environment, um, taking us through the funds performance for the four different funds, and finally uh, the advice on the appropriate fund to invest in as unit uh, holders uh, based on our risk appetite. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Mose. At this point in time, unit holders, uh, I would like to invite our chief 
uh, finance officer, our chief finance officer is Ms. Janet Wawero to take us through the uh, performance uh, of the business for the year ended 31st December 2019. Welcome, Ms. Wawero. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Um, good afternoon, uh, unit holders. I believe it's already afternoon. And uh, I'd like to take you through the financial statements for the various unit trust funds. I'd like to confirm that we did upload these financial statements on the on our website, and therefore what I will present to you will be a brief uh, or an abridged version of the statements. I'll start with the money market fund, and um, we will start by looking at the statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income. And we'll note that as at the year ended December 2019, the fund recorded a total income of 695 million. There were expenses of 167 million, and therefore the profit before tax for the fund uh, within the year was 519 million. The fund recorded a tax expense of 90 million, and therefore a profit after tax of 429 million. If I move on to the statement of financial position unit holders, as at December 2019, we will note that the fund recorded uh, uh, total assets of about 7.33 billion, and the key uh, assets uh, that were recorded in that fund were corporate securities of about 3.8 billion, and government securities of about 1.8 billion, and we also had deposits with financial institutions of about 915 million. Uh, as at December 2019, the unit holders' balances closed at 7.3 billion, giving us a total liquidity and liabilities position of 7.33 billion. Unit holders, I'll move on to the equity fund, and I'll look at the statement of profit or loss uh, and other comprehensive income. And note, as at the year ended December 2019, the fund recorded total income of 32 million expenses of about 56 million and therefore uh, within the year recorded a loss of about 24 million. The income tax expense was about 3.6 million giving us a loss after tax of about 27.2 million. When we look at the statement of financial position unit holders as at December 2019 for the equity fund, we note that the total assets uh, closed at 1.4 billion and the key assets um, within the fund, we had uh, investments in quoted ordinary shares of close to 400 million. We also had offshore investments of about 187 million. The other key assets was investment in other funds of about 615 uh, million. In terms of the liabilities, as at December 2019, uh, the unit holders' balances were at about 1.4 billion, and the fund therefore closed with a total equity and liabilities position of about 1.39 uh, billion. Unit holders, I'll move on to the balanced fund, and uh, I'll start with the statement of profit and loss and other comprehensive income for the year ended 31st December 2019. And we'll note that the balanced fund uh, recorded a total income of 30, about 38 million. Uh, expenses of the fund were close to 30 million, and therefore the fund recorded a profit of uh, about 7.9 million. The income tax expense for the year was around 2 million, and therefore a loss, a profit position of about 5.8 million. Looking at the statement of financial position for the balance fund as at December 2019, we'll note that the fund closed with a total asset position of about 793 million. And, and within this fund, the key assets uh, were in quoted ordinary shares of about 165 million. We did have investments in government securities of close to 61 million and uh, other funds investments of about 431 million. Looking at the liabilities uh, for the fund, we note that the unit holders' balances closed at close to 788 uh, million, and therefore the total equity and liabilities position was close to 793 million. Unit holders, I'll move to our final fund, which is the Bond Plus Fund. 
and I will go through the statement of profit and loss and other comprehensive income as of 31st December 2019. And we'll note that the fund recorded a total income position of about 21 million uh, within the, the year. Total expenses closed at 7.2 million, and therefore the fund recorded a profit of 13.5 million. The income tax expense was 2.3 million, and therefore gave us a profit of uh, about 11.2 million. Looking at the statement of financial position for the Bond Plus Fund as at December uh, 31st, 2019, we note the fund closed with total assets of 226 million, with the key uh, assets uh, or investments in government securities of about 145 million, and we also had investments uh, in deposits with financial institutions of about 55 million within the period. Um, the liabilities position as of 31st December 2019, we note that the fund um, closed at 226, uh, the unit holders balance uh, was at 225 million, and the fund therefore closed at a total equity and liabilities position of 226 million. Unit holders, I'd like to thank you for the support that you have given to us uh, through the period of 2019. And at this juncture, I would like to hand over uh, back to the chair. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Wawero, for that uh, very good presentation. Uh, unit holders, at this point in time, I would want to invite our auditors uh, to present their reports. Our auditors are represented here by, by Mr. Isaiah Gakonyo. So, Mr. Isaiah Gakonyo, please present the report of the auditors for the year ended 31st December 2019. Thank you, Madam Chair, and good afternoon, unit holders. I will now present the independent auditor's report to you, the unit holders across the four funds. Our opinion was the same across the funds, so I will read it as one opinion. We've audited the accompanying financial statements of British American Money Market Fund, British American Equity Fund, British American Bond Plus Fund, and British American Balanced Fund, which complies the statement of financial position at 31st December 2019, and the statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income, statement of changes in unit holders balances and cash flows for the year then ended, and the notes to the financial statements, which include a summary of significant accounting policies. In our opinion, the financial statements give a true and fair view of the financial position of the, of the funds at 31st December 2019 and of their financial performance and cash flows for the year then ended in accordance with international financial reporting standards and the requirements of the capital markets corrective investment schemes regulations 2001. Thank you and back to you Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Gakonyo, uh, for presenting that opinion. At this point, unit holders, I'd like to invite uh, the trustees and the custodian to give their confirmation. I take this opportunity to invite our trustee, that's uh, KCB Bank, who are represented here by Mr. Timothy Demoa, uh, to give their confirmation. Uh, Mr. Demoa. Thank you, Madam Chair, uh, esteemed unit holders, fellow service providers, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good afternoon. My name is introduced by the Chair, is Timothy Ndamwa, representing KCB Bank Kenya Limited, the corporate trustee of the British American, uh, British Unit Trust Funds. Um, in line with the capital markets uh, regu CIS regulations 2001, uh, the trust deed and rules for the Britam asset uh, Managers Unit Trust Funds and the trustee agreement that you've signed with uh, the fund manager. We wish to confirm that on behalf of the unit holders, uh, the trustee exercised the fiduciary responsibility over the pre-term unit trust funds uh, during the year under review. 
We also wish to confirm that the trustee is responsible for the preparation and presentation of the fund's financial statements, as tabled by Ernst & Young, uh, the fund's auditor. In the year-end review, uh, we confirm that the trustee held engagements with the fund manager, the fund administrator, and the custodian, the auditor, and even the capital markets authority to ensure that the operations of the funds during the year-end review complied with the relevant uh, regulations. Unit holders, we wish to confirm to you that nothing has come to our attention to indicate that any of the sub-funds of the Britam Unit Trust Funds will not remain a going concern for the next 12 months from the date of the signed financial reports as tabled by the auditor. A detailed trustees report is contained in the audited financial statements for all the funds which uh, have been shared with you, unit holders, uh, for your perusal. On behalf of the bank, uh, we thank the management uh, at Britam for giving us an opportunity to continue serving uh, the funds. We also thank uh, our fellow service providers for their dedicated service to see the success of these particular uh, funds. We wish to thank Capital Markets Authority uh, for continuously providing an enabling uh, operating environment. And lastly, we wish to thank you unit holders for your unwavering uh, support in patronizing uh, the products provided by uh, Britam Asset Managers and in particular uh, these unit trust funds. We wish you well in the remainder of uh, these deliberations and thank you uh, so much for attending. Back to you, Madam Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Demwa, for that confirmation uh, by KCB Bank. At this point, uh, unit holders, I'd like to invite our custodian, uh, who is Standard Chartered, Chartered Bank, uh, represented here by Mr. Gideon Choka, to give their confirmation. Mr. Choka. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Uh, good afternoon, unit holders. Uh, and management, my fellow service providers. We take this opportunity on behalf of Standard Chartered Bank to confirm to you our responsibility to you as unit holders as we service the fund uh, as the custodians. For the period under review, we confirm that in accordance with the capital market collective investment schemes regulations and the custody agreement signed between Britam Asset Managers and Standard Chartered as the custodian. We confirm that we discharge our duties as prescribed under Regulation 95 of the, of the Collective Investment Schemes Regulations of Capital Markets Authority. We also confirm that we worked very closely with the fund manager in discharging our duties. That is, to the order of the fund manager, we move the assets, either sales or purchase, we place the deposit, we collected income, and we made sure that the assets are safe and there was safe delivery and accountability and collection of all the income due for the period under review. So as at the period that we are reviewing, we confirmed that for the four funds, namely British American Money Market Fund, British American Balance Fund, British American um, Bond Plus Fund, and the British American Equity Fund, we, did, we do have the assets, we were holding them, and we confirmed that the assets are safe. We take this opportunity to thank you for giving us the opportunity to serve you. Your assets are safe. We urge you to keep on investing. And for this period of time, we wish you the very best. And uh, please keep safe. We'll continue to serve you. And thank you for the privilege of having us as your service provider. I hand back over to you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chokal. Unit holders, before we consider the formal business of the meeting, I would like to remind uh, our unit holders that the resolutions put to vote at this meeting will be passed by a poll. Participating unit holders shall receive an SMS or email prompt to cast their thoughts. Unit holders can vote in, in favor of, against, or abstain from the resolution. The results shall be published on the company's website within 24 hours 
and the outcome shall be deemed to be a resolution of this meeting enforceable immediately. The annual audit, audited financial statements for the year ended 31st December 2019, including the reports of the external auditors, custodian, and trustees have been presented to you, the unit holders. While the format of this meeting differs slightly uh, compared to the traditional format that we followed, we've taken significant measures to ensure that it mirrors the usual AGM uh, structure as we've had before. Unit holders, you've already been given an opportunity to ask questions and seek clarifications with regard to financial statements and the solutions being presented and proposed. Responses were provided to all unit holders who asked questions and sought clarification as was provided in the notice calling this meeting. We shall continue to uh, receive questions and to answer them uh, in this session and you can continue sending your questions using the ask question button on your dashboard all by dialing the ussd code star 483 star 806 hash i'll repeat the ussd code star 483 star 806 hash and follow the prompts to submit your question we shall also allow some live calls during this session for those who've registered for that service. You can also vote using the vote button on your dashboard or via the USSD code prov provided. Before we embark to receive and respond to the live telephone call questions, we shall provide you with the guidelines on how to cast your votes uh, to, for the resolutions placed before this AGM. Voting will close at 1 p.m. today. Kindly watch the video that follows uh, on how to vote. Welcome to the Electronic Annual General Meeting of Britam Unit Trust Funds. Once voting has been opened, you will receive a USSD code on your phone with guidelines on how to vote. For those of you with multiple accounts or hold proxies, you will be required to vote for every consecutive account that you hold. Karibuni kwenye mkutano mkuu wa mwaka wa Britam Unit Trust Funds. Mkutano wa huu mwaka Unafanyika kupitia mitandao ya kielektroniki. Upigaji kura utakapoanza, utapokea ujumbe mfupi kwa simu yako, utakaokupa maelekezo ya kupiga kura. Kwa wale kati yenu walio na akaunti zaidi ya moja au waliotumwa kuwakilisha wenzao, yani proxy, mtahitajika kupiga kura kwa kila akaunti ulionayo au unayowakilisha mtawalia. Once voting is open, those eligible to vote will receive a prompt on their mobile phones or email asking them to key in and dial the USSD code on their mobile phones. They will be required to follow the prompts to cast their vote. Those with multiple accounts and holding proxies on behalf of other shareholders will be prompted to vote for the various accounts consecutively. Pigajikura utakapoanza Yeyote aliyehitimu kupiga kura atapokea ujumbe katika simu au barua pepe akihitajika kuweka kodi aliyepokea awali. Utahitajika kufuata maelekezo ili kupiga kura yako. Kwa wale walio na akaunti zaidi ya moja au aliyetumwa kuwakilisha mwanahisa, yani proxy, watapata maelekezo ya kupiga kura kwa akaunti zote mtawalia. The voting process will be as follows. Registered shareholders and proxies will key in and dial the following USSD code from any mobile phone network in Kenya. Upigaji kura utafanyika kama ifuatavyo. Wanahisa na wakilishi wa wanahisa, yani proxy, 
watapiga simu kutumia kodi ifuatayo. Kodi hii inaweza kutumika kwa mitandao yote ya simu. Preferred language. You will be prompted to select your preferred language. Lugha utapewa fursa kuchagua lugha inayokufaa. Once the shareholder chooses the language, the next prompt will be as follows. Welcome to the Britam Unit Trust Funds AGM. Reply with one. Mwana hisa atapochagua lugha atapata jibu lifuatalo. Karibu kwa mkutano wa Britam Unit Trust Funds AGM. Bonyeza moja. Once the shareholder has responded, they will receive the following prompt. Accounts registered with your number are listed below. Reply with one to vote using the first listed account. Mwana hisa atapata jibu lifuatalo. Accounti iliyosajiliwa kwa nambari yako imeorodheshwa hapa chini. Bonyeza moja kupiga kura. Once the shareholder has responded, they shall receive the following prompt. To approve the annual report and financial statements for the year ended 31st December 2019 together with the auditor's report thereon. Reply with 1 if in favor. Reply with 2 if against. Reply with 3 to abstain. Mwana hisa atapata jibu lifuatalo. Kupitisha taarifa za kifedha za kampuni zilizokaguliwa kwa mwaka uliomalizika Disemba 31 mwaka 2019 pamoja na ripoti ya wahasibu. Bonyeza moja kukubali. Bonyeza mbili kukataa. Bonyeza tatu kuazilia. Continue following the same prompts for all other resolutions. Shareholders with multiple accounts shall be prompted to vote until they exhaust all their accounts. Endelea kufuata mchakato kwa hoja zingine. Mwana hisa anaweza kurudia mchakato mzima ili kupiga kura tena ikiwa ana account zaidi ya moja. Once the vote is made, the shareholder shall receive this final prompt confirming that their vote is accepted. Thank you. Your vote has been registered. Mwana hisa atapomaliza kupiga kura, atapata jibu la mwisho kudhibitisha kwamba kura yake imekubaliwa. Asante. Kura yako imesajiliwa. Voting via the live stream dashboard. Shareholders will receive an SMS with their live stream link. Once you click the link, you will find the vote button on the dashboard. Click the button and thereafter, click the voting options as per your choice. Once completed, click the vote for motions button to complete voting. Kupiga kura kupitia mtandao. Wanahisa watapokea ujumbe mfupi na kiunga chao cha kutazama mkutano. Mara tu ukibonyeza kiunga hicho utapata kitufe cha vote. Bonyeza kitufe na baadaye bonyeza chaguzi cha kupiga kura kulingana na chaguo lako. Mara tu itakapokamilika, bonyeza kitufe cha vote for motions kukamilisha upigaji kura. Closing the voting process. Closing of voting will be announced by the chairman. Kufungwa kwa upigaji kura utatangazwa na mwenyekiti. Announcing of the poll results. Results of the resolutions voted on will be published on the company's website within 24 hours following conclusion of the AGM. Matokeo ya uchaguzi itachapishwa kwenye wavuti ya kampuni kati ya masaa 24 kufuatia hitimisho la huu mkutano. Unit holders, we will now proceed to address questions uh, from those dialing in and thereafter answer questions that were received through the portal and USSD codes. So at this moment, I invite uh, unit holders to dial in. Uh, we'll receive a few questions and then answer them at the end. When you call in, please introduce yourself 
and ask your questions. We'll note it and answer towards the end. Please proceed and ask your questions. Okay. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Paul Moriah. I am an investor in Britam Money Market Fund. Thank you, Paul. Okay. Continue. Uh, okay. Uh, as a company, um, I believe the pandemic has affected you in some ways, as it has uh, to all of us. So my question is, what are the operational and financial plans to address the effects of COVID-19? Uh, specifically, which business units are co are continuing? Okay, which business units are continuing to function, and what workforce and community challenges does your company continue to face? Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Uh, we will continue and receive another question. Thank you. Proceed to introduce yourself and thank ask your question. Okay, thank you. My name is Benina. I'd like to know the unique functionalities of the digital customer portal app. Thank you. Thank you, Penina. We'll receive another question. Thank you. Proceed to introduce yourself and ask your question. Well, good afternoon. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you, Britain team, for the presentation. My name is Wamboi Ishora. Uh, my question is on the money market uh, rate. Uh, from the presentations that were shared, the money market rate looked uh, steady just around 9%. It has done very well in the past uh, years, as uh, was shown in the presentation. Um, however, for the last one year, it seems to have stagnated at 9%. Yet we see the, the likes of CIC, GenCap, Zimele, that are operating between 9 to 10%. So my question is, what is it that the other fund managers are doing that uh, Britain is not to keep that rate uh, way above 9%? Thank you. Thank you, Wamboi. We shall now proceed and answer the questions. I'd ask the uh, Chief Executive Officer to take the questions uh, by Paul Moraya and uh, by Penina, and perhaps the uh, Chief investment officer to take the question by Ms. Waboi Gishora. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Chairman, for giving me the opportunity. And I also want to thank the unit holders who have called in to ask these questions, which we will address now. And even for those that have been sent in through the virtual means, we thank you for those questions and answers will be provided uh, in due course. To begin with the first question by Paul Moriah. Paul Moriah is concerned about the impact that the COVID-19 pandemic has uh, brought on the company. And he asks about uh, what are the operational and financial plans that have been put by the company uh, to address the pandemic, which business units are functioning and which ones are not. And as well, uh, he's speaking to the challenges that we may face. It's a good question from Paul, and you will recall that when I started with my initial remarks, uh, I had taken a few minutes to try to address that very point. Because from an operational uh, perspective, what we have then done is that we have reorganized internally to be able to deal with the public health uh, crisis that is currently has been brought on by COVID-19. So as a result, uh, 80 to 90 percent of our staff are now working from home which means that they do not come physically to the office to obviously limit uh, physical contact. 
and all of them have been provided with the right infrastructure at home, be it by way of laptops, internet access, uh, VPN, which allows them to connect to all our systems uh, online uh, from the comfort of their home. And they're able to be productive. Uh, they are able to work. We've been able to monitor them and monitor the rate of productivity. And that is why, from the point of view of all the transactions, uh, all the settlements, all the investments, all of that has continued uh, unabated uh, at the same, uh, the same pace. For those staff who do come to the office, uh, perhaps the 10 or 15 percent, uh, they then operate on a rotor uh, kind of system, meaning that they do not come into contact with each other. Uh, we obviously observe uh, the social distancing, the wearing of face masks, uh, the use of automatic uh, sanitizers to then make sure that they remain safe. And we do ensure that people don't come into contact with each other even as they come to the office to then ensure that they continue to remain, uh, continue to remain safe. Most of our processes now have gone virtual, meaning that they have gone paperless, which then means that the, the need for uh, interaction has gone down. But we've actually noted some efficiency gains because we have actually redesigned a lot of our operational processes to fit the digital and virtual environment. And to that extent, uh, strangely enough, we've actually seen some efficiency gains in terms of timelines and the ability of customers to be able to engage uh, and to self-serve. The investment markets, as you saw from the investment presentation, have come under a lot of pressure. Uh, a lot of companies are not doing well, and you may have seen recently the financial results of many listed companies which have demonstrated a reduction from the point of view of revenues, a reduction from the point of view of profitability, and a reduction from the point of view of cash reserves. And this has also impacted our equity investments and to some extent impacted our property investments. But if you look at what is happening on the bond side, we've seen interest rates really come down, which has been very positive, strangely enough, in as far as bond uh, valuations uh, have been concerned. We do not have any business unit which is not functioning. All of them are open and available for business. And as far as the asset management company is concerned, the life company is concerned, the general insurance company is concerned, all of them remain open for business and they are transacting. They have followed the same methodology as you've heard me describe for the asset management company. So they are now instituting work from home measures. They are now working virtually and online. And whether it is in regard to sales, uh, premium receipting, claims management, and so on and so forth, all of that is working as it should. So fear not, uh, unit holders. Uh, Britam is open for business even in the face of the pandemic. And we have correctly assessed that this pandemic is not going to last one month, neither is it going to be over by December. Very easily, by the same time next year, we may be in the same position. So we have been able to reorganize our business then make sure that uh, the operating model takes into account what it is that we are going through now. I want to address the second question from Penina, and thank you for that question, Penina, because it links in very well uh, to the question that has been raised uh, by Paul Moriah. And you can see there that um, by going online, from the point of view of the mobile applications and the digital customer app, we are allowing customers to self-serve, meaning that you then don't have to come uh, to the office uh, to then engage uh, with us. In terms of the unique functionalities, because that was a question, in terms of unique functionality, it means you can do everything you want to do on the mobile phone as you'd be able to do it physically if you came to, uh, to the office. So you download the application, you can be able to self-enroll and provide uh, all the relevant KYC that we require from you online you can be able to transact, meaning that you can invest funds directly from M-Pesa or the bank. You can be able to withdraw funds. You can be able to top up funds. You can be able to view your portfolio details. You can be able to view your own statements and even print them if you're connected to a, to a printer and a laptop. So in terms of functionality, everything that you'd be able to do physically, you can now do uh, at your convenience uh, from your mobile device. And that is very strong functionality. It is functionality that will continue into the future. And to be honest, it is functionality that for now, we appear to be the only ones who have been able to get a grip of as a fund manager, perhaps with the exception of one or two others. So I do encourage you to download those mobile applications or log into our customer portal to be able to try out that unique functionality that Penina 
I was speaking to. Um, Madam Chair, I want to hand back over to you to direct the answering of the last question. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Kaniu, for those answers. Uh, we have another question by uh, Wamboi Geshora, and I would like to direct that question to the Chief Investment Officer, Mr. Mose. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'll respond to Mrs. Wamboi's question. Um, thank you, Mrs. Wamboi, for, for the question. The question is around um, our money market rate. Um, and the question is asking how competitive is our money market rate and what exactly are we um, doing to make it um, even uh, more competitive going forward. Um, currently, um, our money market rate um, is at 9.2%. Uh, but before I respond, um, the, the key objective for a money market fund is capital uh, preservation. So in pursuit of ensuring that the rate is competitive, we ensure that your capital is preserved. So from the investments that we make, uh, investments across uh, treasury bills, uh, deposits with banks, um, commercial papers, investing in corporate bonds, invest in government paper, we ensure that uh, we we not only investing in, in opportunities that are competitive, but opportunities that are really going concerns, so that we don't get into a position whereby um, we're giving you a rate maybe 12%, 13%, but down the road we tell you we need to impair uh, your capital. So we ensure that um, process of ensuring that all the opportunities that we on board are actually going concerns before um, we, we make the investment. So our rate currently is at 9.2%, 9, 9 which is really competitive. Uh, from my presentation, I talked about the direction of interest rates. If you look at where deposits are, deposits have really plummeted. Tre treasury bill rates have really come down. But we've been able to still maintain the rates above 9%. And how exactly we are doing it? Uh, we're taking advantage of the bond rates as they're coming lower in buying the, bond, uh, the bonds in the primary market and selling them in the secondary market. There's normally an inverse relationship between bond values and interest rates. So we are doing the bond trading to improve, to improve the rates. And the commitment I'd want to give the unit holders is that on a going forward basis, our target is to ensure that that rate stays above 9% and averages anywhere between 9.2% and 9.5%. Uh, for the um, competition that um, Ms. Somboy talked about, um, I, I wouldn't be very sure about the number one objective whereby they're ensuring that your capital is preserved. But for us, we can commit that as we give you a competitive rate of between 9.2% to 9.5%, we ensure that we're not compromising that promise of money market uh, fund of capital preservation. Um, thank you very much for that question, Ms. Somboy. I now hand over um, this to the chair. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mose. Uh, unit holders, at this point in time, we'd like to sample a few of the questions that came through uh, the USSD code. Um, and uh, I will read the question and direct it to the right person to answer. So the first question is from Anne Jerry Karaoke. Anne Jerry Karaoke is asking, can I get my interest through M-Pesa? Can I get my interest through M-Pesa? And I'd like to direct that question to the CEO. Thank you for that um, response and for that question, Anjeri. Uh, the answer is yes, one can be able to receive their interest uh, via M-Pesa. Thank you. Thank you very much for that answer. Uh, the second question that uh, is reflective of many other questions that have been asked uh, comes from Julius Sagara. And Julius wants to know what interest rate on deposit and what is the future outlook? What is the interest rate on deposits and what is the future outlook? Uh, I'll direct that question by Julius to our Chief Investment Officer, Mr. James Mosse. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, Julius, uh, for the question. Um, what's the 
what's um, the outlook of interest rates and where um, are the deposit rates um, currently. Um, if Julius, you walked uh, into, a, into a bank currently um, with your money and tried to negotiate for a rate, um, the best a bank can give you, both from tier one banks to tier two banks, uh, they'll give you a rate of anywhere between two to three percent. Um, but Britam Asset Managers, uh, through the Money Market Fund, we're able now to get your money and uh, money from many other unit holders and be able now to negotiate uh, with banks and uh, because of economies of scale, be able to negotiate a rate of uh, uh, currently anywhere between five to seven percent. But if you look at our money market rate currently is at 9.2%. So then uh, what exactly that says is that our money market product is not only invested in deposits. If, for instance, it was only invested in deposits, the rate that it will be publishing is a rate uh, below uh, 5%. So we've um, made sure that over and above investing in deposits, we've invested in other high-yielding opportunities that have been able to improve the rate um, of the deposits uh, that is coming through anywhere between um, 6 to 7% to the current rate that uh, the fund is uh, providing of 9.2%. And most importantly, is the bond trading is really helping the rate uh, remain at those levels. Uh, thank you, Julius. And I hand over uh, to Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Mose. Uh, we will continue to receive one more question. Um, and the common question that has been asked um, uh, one comes from um, Vitalis Peter Okumu Owino. Vitalis Peter Okumu Owino. And, and Vitalis asks, where are our gifts? Where are our gifts? And I know it's a question that many unit holders have. So I'll ask the uh, CEO to answer that question. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair, and thank you very much, Vitalis uh, Okumu Owino, for that question. Uh, unfortunately, there are no gifts that we are able to provide this year because this is uh, a virtual meeting. And I think I mentioned it's the first time that we are having uh, a virtual meeting. So unfortunately, we have not been able to provide gifts because of the the Ministry of Health guidelines that have been put in place for, up to, for us to observe with respect to the holding of physical, uh, physical meetings. So unfortunately, no gifts uh, for this year, but we do hope that as the COVID-19 pandemic uh, comes to a close, uh, hopefully in early next year, as we then hold our normal uh, AGM meeting, which will be our 15th meeting, we do hope that we will go back to the normal protocols and the normal uh, processes and as far as gifts are concerned. But unfortunately for this year, there are no gifts that we're able to provide. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much, um, Mr. Kanio, for uh, that answer. Unit holders, we'd like to answer as many of your questions as possible, but because of time constraints, we are not able to take more answers, uh, more questions at this point in time. Uh, we request that you continue sending your questions and we commit that we will answer all of them and publish the answers in our website. Unit holders, uh, we shall now proceed to voting for the resolution of the meeting. The resolution shall be passed by a poll, as I said, and unit holders who registered for the meeting have received uh, the SMS prompts uh, to cast their foot. I now put the resolution of the meeting and ask uni unit holders to vote. And the resolution unit holders is to receive, consider, and if deemed fit, adopt the annual report and financial statements for the year ended 31st December 2019 together with the auditor's report thereon. So the resolution, again, is to receive, consider, and if deemed fit, adopt the annual report and financial statements for the year ended 31st December 2019, together with the auditor's report thereon. 
I will now call upon a member to propose and another to second the resolution. Do we have a proposer and a seconder for the resolution? Yes, uh, Madam Chair, thank you. The resolution has been proposed by Mr. Chiboli Induli Shakaba and seconded by Ms. Margaret Mombi Kagiri. Thank you, Mrs. Kiruki. I will now ask the secretary to confirm if there is any other business uh, for discussion for which due notice has been given. Thank you, Madam Chair. I confirm that there is no other business for discussion for which due notice was given. Thank you again, uh, Mrs. Kiruki. There being no business of which due notice has been given, I take this opportunity to thank you, our unit holders, uh, for attending this meeting. This concludes the business of the 14th Annual General Meeting of the unit, Britam Unit Trust Funds. I thank you for your attendance and I declare the meeting officially closed. I will now invite uh, Ms. Becky Diba to uh, give a closing prayer. Thank you, Chair. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the conclusion of this meeting. We thank you for taking us through. We thank you for the business that has been discussed and concluded. As we close up, O oh Lord, um, be with us, walk with us, guide us, and we pray for a successful partnership between ourselves and our clients, and we also pray that they may keep well, and the same applies to ourselves and ours. We pray that believing and trusting in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Save and invest in the Britam Money Market Fund and realize your dreams. Are you saving up for a car, school fees, a wedding or even a holiday? Whatever your saving objective is, the Britam Money Market Fund is the best 